Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. I'm joined by Jay Money. You can find him on Twitter and on his YouTube show at Jay Money is Money. I'm also joined by Sean Little from MSG Networks. You can catch him at Chicago Flow. He's also doing been doing a bunch of stuff for the NBA playoffs across a bunch of platforms. So make sure to check him out. He's also on Twitter at Chicago Flow and in the Action Network app. Today is your best bets episode for both Saturday, May 18th, and Sunday, May 19th, because we got a game seven in the NBA playoffs. We'll do best bets and give you all the breakdowns on it. Uh, spoiler alert, Jay's taking the Mavs again. Um, we will break all of that down on today's show. Everything we talk about can be found in the award-winning Action Network app. You can track your picks. You can also get up to the second stuff on like where the betting money is coming in on. But if you sign up for the pro subscription, you can also – uh, see stuff like where are the sharp indicators, like where's the sharp money, how is it moving the market, those types of things you can find in the Action Network app. Make sure to check out youtube.com slash the Action Network. We did Buckets Live on Thursday night. Great show after uh, Nuggets Wolves Game 6. We broke down Game 7, kind of looked at the market. We talked about hedging stuff. We're going to do Buckets Live post game after both games won, both game ones of the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. So after both of those games – Around 11 Eastern, when those games wrap, we will have a Buckets Live episode for you. So make sure to check those out. Uh, also, I do want to let you know uh, that you need to check out our WNBA pod, our WNBA Buckets pod. You're going to want to check that out because uh, it's been phenomenal. Great start to the season. Figuring out how to fade these the Caitlin Clark overreaction. Is the market going to overreact too much? The WNBA season has officially started in our Buckets WNBA podcast. With Maria Marino, Jim Turvey, Dano Mattia, and other Action Network contributors. Jay's going to be on there at some point. Bring your best bets in the W every Tuesday and Friday morning. So go download and subscribe to Buckets WNBA. There's a link in the episode description of this podcast you're listening to right now. All right, enough dilly-dally. Let's get to it. We got games six, Thunder Mavs on Saturday. Game seven, Nuggets Wolves on Sunday. Uh... Thunder are currently four point dogs. There's a three and a half floating in the market currently uh, for that game. The total on that game, two, wow, it opened to 11 and a half. It's down to 209 and a half. So definitely a lot of money coming in on the under. Uh, and on Sunday, the Denver Nuggets opened as a four and a half point favorite, bumped back up to five, then a five and a half, and is back down to four and a half, met resistance at the five marks and there's still four and a halfs and fives in the market total on that game. As it is a game seven, there's a one ninety eight and a half in the market for the over uh, for the under and a one ninety seven and a half for the over. Uh, it should be an ugly, ugly game. Let's get into best bets. Sean little. What's your best bet for this weekend? Dallas Mavericks first half minus one and a half. There's a two out there. I would bet it up to two. Okay. Jay money. What's your best bet for this weekend? Mavs minus three and a half. Okay, so nothing on on game seven from either of you two. Not I, yet. Yeah, yeah, we hopped. We talked about it really quick before. My my beat on that series is a little. It's a little touch and go. So I got to stay off. Uh, I'm on Nuggets minus four and a half. I'm also on a same game parlay. Nuggets minus four and a half, and the under on Minnesota Timberwolves team total on the same game parlay. That'll get you plus one forty eight is the best price in the market right now. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and let's hit Mavericks Thunder. So Jay's been right. I'm going to go ahead and validate everything. Jay's been right about the series. He said the Mavericks were better. He said they would beat him up inside. That's what's happened. The Mavericks have a chance to close this game out. Jay, I'll let you go first. Why do you like the Mavericks to close them out here in game six? Yeah, this is the series right here. First off, you don't want to go to OKC for Game Seven, uh, which I do know. I do feel like some of these teams, maybe like the Nuggets, feel like they can get it done in a Game Seven, so they don't mind going there. But uh, this is the Mavs series right here. They're at the house. Um, they have the better team, in my opinion. They have the size advantage. They just have to have have to hit some shots like they have. Uh, I think the the OKC uh, fans and crowd has really pissed off Luca and Kyrie as well. I think they're ready to get these boys up out of here. I think the Thunder are just like they're one step away from from like winning. Like, like getting toward the Western Conference Finals, I don't think it's this year. Um, it's just really simple with me. This is the series right here. If the Mavs want to win this series, you have to win this game. And I think they, they come out here and handle business um, from start to finish. So I will lay the points with the Mavs in this spot. If the Thunder win this game, would you bet the Thunder in Game 7? I still wouldn't. 
So. I think the Mavs get out of this series regardless, but I do well, feel okay. a lot more. I feel a lot more comfortable with them winning this game six at the house. Okay, I'm confused though. You said this is the series, so if you this is you this is the series, Matt. But they're still they're going to win the series, in my opinion, regardless. Even if it. So your question was, would I bet them in Game Seven? Would I bet the Thunder? No. Even though I think this is the series, even if the Mavs were happen did happen to lose, I still would not bet the Thunder in Game Seven. Oh, okay. So, so you're not saying if the Mavericks lose this game, they're going to lose the series. Exactly. You're just like the Mavericks are going to win this. You're just like this is the series because the Mavericks are going to win this game. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Sean, why do you like first half on Mavs? Yeah. So let's talk about the the first couple games here. Last couple games, I should say. Dallas dominated two games ago. They absolutely capitulated and folded down the stretch when they lost. I believe it was 196 when SGA went crazy in the fourth quarter, and they just completely folded and lost the game. And then if we go back to game five here, they absolutely dominated from start to finish. Luka had the best game he's had probably all playoffs, and they were sensational. If we look at the first half specifically, the Oklahoma City Thunder have been poor in that first half. Offensively, last offensive rating at 104.2 left of the remaining playoff teams. And I believe if they get off to a slow start in Dallas, against Luka and the guys coming off a closeout game, they're going to be in deep trouble. That's why I got to back Dallas in the first half, and I think it does trickle into the second half in the game. I like Dallas overall. This is – we. I, I've been, you know, bullish on – I know Oklahoma City is young. They hadn't showed it. I believe they're starting to show it here a little bit. We, we were talking about Jalen – SGA has a for sure running mate in Jalen Williams – He's come up a little short here the last few spots where he has needed some support. He hasn't got the knockdown shooting from the rest of the supporting cast. Like, to be honest, like Dallas has gotten from PJ, from from DJJ, a lot of his supporting cast, honestly, that's what's been keeping those guys afloat. Everybody else outside of Luka, uh, Kyrie hasn't shown up really, especially offensively, I would say, for Dallas. So I think... They have shown they don't compete as well offensively in the first half throughout the playoffs. Now they have to go on the road in a closeout to Dallas where Lucas smells blood in the water coming off his best game of the year. I think they're going to come out flat to start the game, maybe even a little tight and show that age a little bit. That's why I'm back in Dallas here in the first half. They got that scare a couple games ago where they lost and SGA was awesome coming down the stretch. They've been lights out since then in the last game. and I think they continue that form here coming out in the closeout in Dallas. I like the first half angle there. I like that. I might just bet I might just bet Mavericks full game. Um interesting trend here. And I'm not just trying to be contrarian here. Um I just thought it was interesting because my thought was when I started looking at numbers and like this is just a trend. You don't have to play it. It's fine. But I, I was kind of like, oh, if you win game five on the road, I bet those teams smash in game six. You're at home. You're at the house. You get a chance to close them out. You don't want to go back to the other city. You're going to like play hard and take out that, that team. Like this is the spot. Um, yeah, they're 15 and 18 straight up 45%. They don't win. They don't win as much. Um, now home favorites are better in that spot. Um, they are 13 and 10 at 57%. It's close. It's a small sample, like most of these are going to be. But I just thought it was kind of interesting that, like, um, also by the way, those teams that do that are favored uh, are only forty four percent ATS. They're ten and thirteen, so the thirteen and ten straight up forty four percent ATS, which I thought was kind of interesting. And the average line on those is only five, um, so it wasn't like these are massive favorites here in, in this game six spot at home. Um, but I just thought that was kind of interesting that, like, I would have expected, like, oh man, you're going to smash in this spot. You just won game five. You're at home. Crowd's behind you. You know you're better. You just suck the life out of them. You kill them, and that's not really how it's gone. I don't know why, but that's not really how it's gone. Um, but this is the series and not those series, so uh, it's av obviously true. Like, um, hmm, How can I say this? I think there's a lot to kind of break down from an X's and O's standpoint because if you're like, so the Mavericks haven't done anything defensively? And I'm like, no, like they've done an amazing job in the paint like just incredible um they have stacked four dudes in there they have bodied them they have been physical they have Derek jones jr in particular deserves a lot of credit for disrupting drives and getting his hands so like it's not just the bigs that are contesting at the rim 
it's that Kyrie and DJJ and all these perimeter dudes are getting their hands on or or at least showing enough to force them into uncomfortable situations. There's not these wide open lanes for the Thunder to be able to get to or even challenge one on one. Like the Thunder are trying to drive into like four dudes. Um, Sean kind of touched on it, the underperformance of the role players. I'll be honest with you. Um, a lot of this is like, this is about perception. And I think it's really tough. If a team is jacking up a lot of threes and they're missing a lot, we're like, oh, they're just not in rhythm, man. The defense they just hit, like, they're just not in rhythm. And if they're knocking them down, we're just like, are the Mavs going to get a hand up? Good God. And I don't know really how to like parse that because the thunder are built on these kind of trigger actions that they've gotten the looks of. Like I went back and, and watched uh, game five. And if you're like, if you ask me like, were these great looks? No. Were they makeable? Absolutely. And if you want to say like, they should shoot a bad percentage on those. We'll probably agree on those. Should they have shot as badly as they did? Probably not. Like that's the thing here is um, you, I said this too about PJ Washington. Cause everybody's like, well, if you leave him open and I, I made this point a lot. <laughs> NBA players that are wide open are not going to hit 80% on wide open threes. Like that's not how this works in in-game environment shoot around. Sure. Absolutely. In-game environment. We have like a huge swath of time. Can they do it for a game? Absolutely. Is that sustainable? No. Same. If you ask good shooters to shoot slightly contested shots over and over again, are they going to shoot 40%? No. Are they going to shoot 30% every time? No, they're going to have some bad games. Are they going to shoot 22% over and over and over again? Probably not, Sean. Yeah, no doubt about it. And we talked about the shooting variance, and that's a big key to this series. Now, if a team last couple games hasn't shot it very well, and last time they were in Dallas when they got a W, they were 7 of 27 from three. And the only person to score more than 18 points was SGA, who had 34 in a closeout game going back to Dallas where I just watched you struggle and essentially steal a game and then struggle in the next game at home, I have no faith that they're all of a sudden going to be knocked down lights out shooters in a closeout game at Dallas. I think that's also why it's a big fade spot for me for Oklahoma City. This is going to be the first time I really feel like, especially coming off the last two games, that maybe these guys are young. And, and as Jay alluded, they're not. Th this is not their time to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I think all of that is added up on just younger guys, the yep. environment, and now Luca is coming off his best game, looks a little more healthy, isn't complaining as much, was more focused on just doing what he had to do to get the W, and yeah. that's where we're at here coming in. He's game. still complaining. He's no. still complaining, Sean. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's not to the He's point where it was. It, it was. it was. It was less. I mean, it, we Jay, I'm with you on on some of these <laughs> prior to Game Five. I mean, it, it's – and it's – also, I think, too, Matt and Jay, there's a way to complain that's a lot more visually better than how Luka does it. Jokic yeah. is kind of another, like, whining, like, running around with his hands up, and yeah. Luka kind of does the same thing where a lot of other players well, and, okay. and, and other people complain, but it's just so visually jarring when Luka and the guys yeah. do it. I can't say – one thing I'll say about Jokic, he doesn't really complain. That's one thing. I, like, Luca complained. If I could bet on how many times he, he looked towards the ref, uh, like, Luca's like nine or, like, I mean, I like the guy, but nine or ten times a game. Jokic doesn't, he he rarely ever, like, he might throw his hands up, but he's not just going to the refs or all in the refs' ear. Uh, oh, I can't I say about, about that, Jay. Yeah, Jokic is yeah, complaining quite I'll a bit. Somebody, as somebody that watches him in person for 41 a year, Jokic complains a metric ton. But, Sean, like, let's just be very, very clear here. There is the goat whiner, and that's Luka Doncic. For sure. He is the greatest whiner of all time. Like well, there LeBron's, is LeBron's up there. I now. you know yes LeBron's up there. <laughs> so here here's the thing. Luca will literally there was a play in I think game two where he got hit and like he got hit. He's still dribbling and he turns to the official and is like having a conversation <laughs> during the fucking play. Yeah. And like that kind of sequence, you know, and it's it was every single play. Now he did talk about like how he talked post game about how some people in, and like I heard this that some people in his life kind of got to him and were like, "Hey, you gotta you gotta remember why you love playing basketball." And he talked about that. Like he was like, "I gotta remember." He's like, "I forget that this is a game I love." And like he played with a lot more joy. 
in um in game six, uh, five and that's i think is is meaningful we'll see if it carries through like we'll see if, you know how it how it kind of carries through here but i do definitely do think it's positive um let me ask you yeah. this matt really quick before we before we come off of this game and we could talk minnesota Denver. who steps up for the thunder to help out sga is it Jalen williams yeah, so it, 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 there was two. There was two guys in that game for comeback who were actually huge. Um, I don't understand the conversation around Lou Dort. I just don't. Everyone's like, "Why is Lou Dort out there? He can't yeah. shoot at all." And I'm like, "Well, he was 39 percent during the regular season, and he's 40 percent in the playoffs." And if you're like, "Yeah, but they're not scared of guarding him," right? Which is a good thing if you're a forty percent three point shooter, is you get a lot of good looks. And he knocked down two huge shots in Game Four. He had a bad Game Five because everybody had a bad shooting variance night. Yeah. And and the Mavs play great defense. Uh, it can be both. Um, it was him, and then Jalen Williams had that big runner and one in Game Four. So I think J Dub's been below par. I also think that like J Dub could definitely go off here, and it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. Like if the Thunder won this game, it's probably because like J Dub has a really strong performance. Because I think the Mavericks have figured out enough about SGA to get comfortable with him. They've gotten better over the course of a series, which is what teams do. Like they've just gotten more used to him. And he had a phenomenal performance in game four. Game five, they just kept throwing layer after layer at him. You know, they've really gotten to look, you I mean, you always have to pick your poison. And the Nuggets said in game five, anybody but Ant. And in Game Six, the Mavericks, the uh, Wolves, rather, were like, "No, we're like, we're sending doubles. Any, you're not scoring. Fine, go pass. We don't care anymore. We're not getting killed by you anymore." And the the Mavericks in Game Five did the same thing with SGA, where they're like, "You're going to face five players, and they're all going to be in the spots that you prefer to shoot from. We're not going to let you get to any of your spots. We're just going to stand there, and we're going to leave guys wide open, and they're going to miss." Be, because we have black magic i don't know but like that <laughs> that's how that goes so i think the beauty of oklahoma city though throughout the entire year has been the balance and then mm-hmm. they have the yep. killer in sga and that balance hasn't been there nope. especially on the back half of this series and surprisingly the more balanced team that we talked all we talked about was luca and Kyrie and how they for perfect running mate the really the balanced team in this series has been Dallas. They've been a lot more balanced coming down the stretch here. I think this is a too too tall of a task, especially Does that early. Feel, let me ask you this, something. Does that feel real to you? That they've been more balanced in this series? That that like that's that that's like who they are. Like are they a balanced team? No, ever they're since just they got balanced. Gafford. Ever since they got Gafford and PJ Washington, they've been a lot more balanced. They've before they had their defense, balanced. before they had their defense was absolutely a. I don't, I don't mean offense, defense. I mean in terms of offensive con- contribution, right? So you're right that they've been more, be- they've been great off defensively since they got Gaff. Like that's absolutely true. But like, the cost there has been their half court offense hasn't been as good. Um, so like, do we feel? And they've gotten so many great contributions from the role guys, the others in the series. Does that feel like that's sustainable going forward after the series? Um, I, it, well, look, offensively, they're designed around one guy and then another guy. Uh, the the balance has been an absolute shock in my eyes offensively because I wasn't expecting to get as much contribution as they have had from P.J. and Derek Jones Jr. and Lively, essentially offensively. Offensively, Lively's prop has been around six six and a half points every single night, and he's been knocking that down every single night, seven points the other night, nine in the, in, uh, in the last game here as well. So – the balance has been a little shocking. I don't know how sustainable it is because we'll, if, if, if we want to get really, really into the weeds, Matt, we know that those first two games of the year where PJ, or the, or the series, I should say, that PJ got going, they flat out were just letting PJ do whatever he wanted. He was getting butt naked looks over and over and over again. And then they eventually were like, hey, I guess we do got to adjust, readjust to this a little bit. And he's continued to, to impact. And then Derek Jones, Tim Hardaway is coming off a of spot and contributing. They've been a lot more balanced than I thought they would offensively. Um, Chet Holmgren is a 37% three-point shooter. In this series, he is shooting 25%. Uh, Aaron Wiggins is a is uh, a 49% three-point shooter <laughs> this season. Uh, he was 39% last season. Uh, Aaron Wiggins is shooting 31% from three in this series. That, to me, is your series. Um, but... I also don't really want to bet on regression here. I just think it's a bad spot. So I'll probably go ahead and just lay the points with Jay with the Mavericks and just go ahead and, and take the L on that. 
Uh, all right, on Sunday, the Denver Nuggets take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, Wolves smacked them in game six. I'm so mad I didn't play alts. Like, I had the thought driving around yesterday after I bet Wolves. I was like, if they win this game, they're going to win it by, like, 30. I need to bet alts. And didn't didn't remember to go back and do it. Did not do it. That hurts because <laughs> I was absolutely right on that. Uh, Nuggets are minus four and a half in this game. Total is really low. Uh, so the numbers here are what you would think. Um, home teams... I have won these games. Like, that's been the trend. The cover rate is not as good. Um, Sean, you kind of talked about this, about how you're having a hard time with this series. What's made this series so hard for you to cap? Yeah, the – I guess, uh, honestly, the I really got out of whack narrative-wise and mentally after they smashed him in game two without Gobert. I was like, oh, my God. They just got run off the floor and Gobert didn't play. I don't know if they can compete with these guys. And I completely rode off Denver like an idiot. You could have got them plus 700 to win the West after game two. Then in game three, they did the the, the whole championship, part of a champion uh, storyline. They came out and did what they're supposed to do. Then they ripped off three in a row. And it was like, had they figured them out? And it looked like they did. I, I'm, and I'm watching every single possession of this. And I'm like, they have these guys figured out. I don't care where the game is played. Minnesota, New York, Denver, Miami. They're going to play these guys five. They're, they're going to have no answer for them. I, I Maybe I didn't give enough credence to the Conley being back on the floor. But for them to get run off the floor like that, I don't even know what that performance was from Dallas – or from Denver, excuse me. They just completely didn't show up. So, I, I – of course, my natural inkling is to, to to bet the Zag and the champs at home. But I, I don't know. I, I the, the number I felt like would be a little heavier as well. I thought it would be like five and a half, six – in mm-hmm. a game seven at home, it's a little shorter than I thought coming in. So it's just a game I got to stay off. Here, here's the trick of this game. Um, you need to, spoiler alert, you need to bet whoever you think is going to win the game. Uh, <laughs> you need to not bet the Wolves on the spread. I talked about this with Fiddle. You can catch the discussion on Buckets Live. Go to youtube.com slash the action network. He's of the belief that you should bet. You can bet the the Wolves spread and then just escalate it. And that's the best way to play it. I'm of the opinion that you should just leave off the escalator. Um, here's and here's like part of why. Um, so, <laughs> home favorites after round one because round one we have like some of those. Sometimes you just have weird series where like a dog takes a team to game seven and then the better team wins out. After round one, home favorites are twenty and twelve straight up, sixty three percent. Good, not dominant, but good. Um, sixteen and sixteen ATS. Okay, but. But if they win, they are 16 and four against the spread at 80%. So this is the Matt Mitchell rule. If you like the Nuggets, like I do, lay the points. You don't need to worry about laying the juice on the 180. Just lay the points. It's less than two possessions. Lay the points here. If you like Minnesota, um, then I think that you need to go ahead and just play them outright on the money line. Like, I just think that that's like a, a better play. It's a better value return. If you want to do all it's minus two and a half, I think is a good one. Just to go ahead and get in, get less than get over a possession. I think is, is pretty good counting free throws. Um, it depends on who you think is going to win this game. Jay, I will ask you, you don't have a bet on this game, but your early lean, your early thoughts, who do you think wins this game? I'd lean to the nuggets. Like if I had a free bet on it, I'd play nuggets minus four and a half, but, um, I don't know, man. It's a, I mean, the Wolves showed us that they're not done, that they're not done in this series and that they, they can adjust to the uh, Nuggets adjustments as well. And so just me personally, I do think the Wolves can hang with these guys. I think they have the size and the depth, once again, um, that they can, they can hang with them. So if they were able to win this game, wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um, if I had to bet it, it'd be Nuggets, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Wolves won game seven on the road. I'd actually be pretty happy to see it. Jay and Matt. Is Anthony Edwards ready to go on the road and shoot it 20 to 25 times in a game seven in the playoffs? I think that's the question here. If he is going to take that responsibility and know he's going to have to go out there and score 30 plus for them to win this game, I think they have a real shot. Now, if he, there's been some games in this series where he just hasn't been typical aggressive Ant-Man. He's taken 15 shots in two of the games. He, if he comes out, and tries to fill it up, I think that's the only way they have a real shot to win. He was so aggressive last night in game six that I was impressed. Can he back that up and go on the road with it? 
it, it, it's a it's a different atmosphere, a different a different ask. So I want I want to one credit Ant, and then two I want to put some more context on it because I did the rewatch this morning. Um, the Wolves threw a kitchen sink game, as you would expect for a team that's facing elimination at home. And what I mean by that is not just the effort, which was phenomenal. I mean, there was tactical stuff that they finally showed. Um, <laughs> they ran a bunch of sets with double screens. It wasn't elevators. What they ran was they ran, <laughs> there was a really, two really great uh, sets that they just killed the Nuggets on, which is they ran double screen into a DHO. And what happens in that scenario is Jokic can't navigate between two screens. So Jokic has to drop. So when they try and show two at Ant, that means Conley is on the edge. And that means that they, he just whipped it to Conley and Conley got downhill versus Joker in a drop coverage. Those are the type of things that they ran. They ran empty side and Ant almost this entire series has run almost entirely up top one five pick and roll. That's been that's like that's the standard NBA pick and roll. They switched it to almost not just side pick and roll from the top. They ran side to corner pick and roll to get Ant in like situations where he can rise and fire over baseline. So that stuff I think is is really important. Um, one more but thing. On if that. you go back to Game Three, right, Matt? Like we and, and I know we got to get out of here, but yep. we saw Anthony Edwards in Game Three have an opportunity to really shut the door, go up three zero at home, and I understand the three days off it was really killer and gave Denver. Uh, a lot of time to regroup, but I felt like he settled quite a bit in that game. He had eight threes, eight of his 15 attempts yep. were from three. He settled yep. quite a bit when he could have stepped on their throat and really yep. closed them out. Then he comes back and bounces back. Going on the road to Denver, and, and I don't care if they give you pick and rolls from the, the corner to the top of the key. You just got to go out there and impact the game uh, in a big, massive, major way. Uh, two more notes before we get out of here. Dogs that cover are 12 and four straight up in these game sevens after round one, that's 75%. So again, if, if you want to bet the wolves, just, just, just bet them on the money line. It's going to be the better play. Um, the under for the team total for the losing team in a game seven is 30 and six. That's 83% versus 72% in all the other ones. That's a Dang. big, big difference. It's 11% advantage there. So that's why I'm on Wolves under and the Nuggets uh, minus four and a half as well. All right, it's going to do it for Buckets. Thanks for joining us. You can catch Jay Money on his own YouTube show throughout the week. YouTube.com slash Jay Money is money. Catch Sean over the MSG networks as he continues the Knicks improbable run towards, I guess, a championship or something. Um, <laughs> you can also check out all of our stuff on youtube.com slash the action network. Thanks for joining us. My thanks to David Payne, our producer, Hutton Jackson, the video crew for getting this up on YouTube. We'll see you guys again next time. Have a great weekend. Until then, let's get buckets. Buckets.